I'm going to talk a little bit housekeeping first and do some introductions. Um, so just so everybody knows who's sitting here in our inner circle, we have Take, uh, Take Yamashiro, Naomi Shikaze, an empty seat for anybody that wants to pop in and join. Um, Tamiyo Wakayama, Gordon Padota, Mayu Takasaki, and Rick Shiomi. And my name is Angela Kuku, and I'm going to be moderating our little discussion today. Um, if anybody wants, there are snacks over at that corner with our lovely volunteers. And they're not eating them just so you can have them. They're not even testing them. So go and get some snacks if you want. And um, also, Pal Street's Key IT. There's some iced tea over there if anybody wants that. As far as housekeeping goes, um, as you can see, there are people recording. So we're recording video and audio. And if you're participating, you're consenting to being recorded. So just an FYI, that's how that works. A little formality, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, and just wanted to say as well that we're here to not just get one story, but a multiplicity of stories. So lots of different perspectives about um, how Powell Street started, how Powell Street continues today, and everybody's going to have a, have a different collection of moments that they want to share, and just wanting to acknowledge that. Um, as well, this isn't the only discussion, there's another one at 1 o'clock, if we're on schedule and if I do my job properly, um, about sort of Powell Street's relationship to the arts. So here we're going to be talking a little bit about its inception, but there's going to be a lot of overlap, so it'll be good if you can to stick around for both and kind of explore the ways that different voices and ideas can actually cross over into one, one kind of unity of stuff. Um, last couple things. Uh, if I interrupt you, please don't take it personally. I'm just trying to <laughs> keep an eye on the time. And when you're talking, please talk into the mics the way I'm holding it now. And without further ado, I'm going to move right into one minute for Take to say a little bit of a clarification, and then we're going to get to some questions. Uh, just for clarification to start with, right, it's uh, about Naryumi's article in uh, uh, Gebko. You have to go in your mouth. Oh, okay. Here we go. It's about the article on uh, uh, Gebko for the month of uh, August, is this? July. July. And unfortunately, my interview article is here, and uh, there's information I never spoke about. I, I will be the last oh, person to close, close uh, comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the last person to talk about uh, this, this particular point in this uh, particular paragraph here. Is, it, it says basically says that uh, a Taiko from uh, Greater Vancouver uh, and uh, Cross Canada or something, they gather to celebrate. But, you know, Taiko never existed uh, uh, back then. And somebody else's, uh, 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 I guess, throw in. And uh, I never knew that was a part of my interview. And this is wrong. And as I said, uh, the, uh, the Taiko, actually, for the first festival, there's a group from Fukui, by the effort of our staff, actually, who did the campaign, Noriko, uh, 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 Hiroko, uh, Hiroka Noriko. Uh, that, uh, because of her effort through Yomiuri uh, throughout Japan, we recruited very, very uh, interesting uh, variety of performing groups, among which there's one taiko group from Ryujin uh, Taiko, they called it, from Fukui. And this was, I think, to me, I guess, to many people, this became inspiration. This was really inspiration. Then, soon after, in 79, uh, there's uh, a Kodo, presently called Kodo, but original name is Onde Koza. They gave a play, and, uh, and also they threw one concert for Tonarigumi, uh, because of Rick actually arranged through Vancouver International Children's Festival early for Adele. So, so these are the things that, 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 that I think happened in the very beginning, and Taiko emerged after our, and the Katari Taiko. So, 
course not, but it's it's not, you know, it hasn't appeared back in 77, uh, until 1881 or something? 79. 79, okay. So th that's, that's my question. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, because uh, I have missed the time. That's all. I, 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 Um, moving right into questions, the first thing I wanted to ask everybody about is um, kind of how you know each other and how you knew each other, how you met each other, how you became connected to begin with. So for, for me, this kind of this question comes out of my own experience a little bit with the very recently formed Japanese Canadian Young Leaders. And we actually formed because we weren't connected. We formed because we, there wasn't a built-in connection, whereas for you guys, it seems like that was a different experience. So I wanted to hear how that came about, how you came to know each other. Maybe start with Rick and work our way back to Take. Okay, um, Naomi and I are cousins. Back in the early 70s, 71, 72, when we were going to university, Naomi and I met a Japanese American named Ron Tanaka, and he introduced us to the Asian American movement in the United States. Um, and so, 72, 73, 74, we formed a group of young Japanese and Chinese Canadians at UBC. We put on a, a very rudimentary historical photo exhibit, and um, we kind of developed a sense of awareness of the movement and identity and things. Then we, after university, we split and some of us went to Japan and, and others went on and got jobs and things. Then after coming back from Japan, we all started working or hanging out at Tonarigumi. And Tonarigumi is probably crucial to this because it became a place where we either worked, volunteered, or just hung out. Um, and that's where Rick and everybody came in. Where was Tonarigumi at the time? Was it on Powell? No, no, it was on Hastings Street, 573 East Hastings Street. Yeah, um, I just actually want to uh, mention this book that Take has there. Why don't you show it? Spirit of the Issei, uh, about Tonarigumi, why don't you show it? This is a um, terrific book, just to get some of that basic history about Tonarigumi and how it led into several things, including the Powell Street Festival. Um, and I came from a slightly different place um, than that group, because I was born and raised in Toronto, so I was classically the kind of detached uh, uh, sansei kind of um, guy. And I, for some reason, ended up coming to Vancouver for a while. And um, first got involved in, in Tonanagumi because of a couple of people who worked there, Kasuko Sonoda and uh, Taiko Miwa, and they were working on a project called the Minamata Project, which was a photo exhibit about the problems of mercury poisoning in Japan. And so somehow I got asked to, to work with them and then got to know Tanarigumi, and then that led to uh, my knowing Take, and then from there getting involved in the festival. Thanks, Rick. Gordon, did you want to talk about how you became connected to these folks? Well, when uh, when you get older, your short-term memory goes, and then there's a long-term memory that's there. But if you get older, it just all gets mumble jumble. So, yeah, I got lots to say, but I don't know if I can say it in a coordinated way. But uh, yeah, looking around. Uh, really brings me to 1975-76, you know, when I think the, uh, the photo, uh, the, the photo group, yeah, Dream of Riches and the, the photo group. Um, the Dream of Riches as a, as a publication came after, I think, or decided after. But um, um, in December of uh, 1976, uh, Jim Horiichi and uh, Mrs. Miyoko Kobashi were in Toronto to discuss the um, uh, centennial of the Nikkei uh, uh, 
the UK is in Canada. And um, when they came back, um, Jim was uh, he kept complaining about his um, heart problem, which he did have. And Mrs. Miyoko kept complaining about Jim. So <laughs> <laughs> I had to uh, get in and uh, try to sort things out. But uh, this was in December, so by January we formed the um, the uh, uh, Centennial Society of BC, and um, we left. Uh, I left Jim in uh, as Jim Morici as the president and. That year, uh, Dr. George Ishiwara, I don't know if you remember him, he passed away in the spring. So on uh, May, May 14th, which was the opening day of the centennial, uh, centennial for British Columbia, um, we had a special uh, memorial for George, Dr. George Ishiwara, and he was made the honorary president. But anyway, that's just a bit of history. Um, the um, real panic was in um, January and February, part of February 1977, uh, the centennial year, and trying to get the community organized. And uh, to make a, a long story short, I think that year we ended up with more than uh, 100 events in British Columbia and uh, Take and uh, Teresa um, were on the uh, cultural uh, committee and they performed their koto and shakuhachi. I don't know who made us a standard piece. <laughs> uh, and we went to places like uh, well, Vernon Kamloops and Williams Lake and wherever there was a Japanese um, Canadian group, we went because we wanted to to hear from them, we wanted to meet with them, and we wanted to to let people know that the Japanese Canadians um, may be uh, finally being uh, accepted uh, in our community. And I think the centennial did that in 1977. And uh, the end of uh, November of 1977, there was a, a national JCCA a conference in Winnipeg and um, at that time not just Toronto but I think George Imai who was a uh, prominent in the National JCCA uh, George Imai uh, wanted to do the redress all kind of by himself so he negotiated with the Minister of uh, uh, Multicultural which was just uh, started uh, and he said he's got to deal with the ministry for 4.3 million <laughs> Japanese Canadians. Anyhow, um, what I found out during that year and near the end of the year, uh, because the National JCCA was in five chapters. It was the um, um, Quebec chapter, Toronto chapter, Manitoba chapter, Alberta chapter and uh, uh, British Columbia. Those five chapters were considered the branch of the JCCA. But what I found out during the centennial year was that we were no longer take that kind of form as the Japanese Canadian community because there were a number of areas like in Montreal or Edmonton, uh, a number of places in British Columbia that did not even use the word JCCA. They were just called the Japanese Community Organization. And that was the beginning of the NAJC, National Association of Japanese Communities. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to really cut you off here and pass yeah, the mic to just talk about this to what you said. Yeah, of course. Yeah, just, just to enrich uh, uh, what uh, Gordon was talking about. Uh, there's one year leading up to uh, uh, to this uh, 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 formation uh, uh, since the time Mrs. Kobayashi Gordon and uh, Jim Horiuchi went to uh, the, the Toronto. Was that Toronto? Oh, sure. So, so uh, because of that, you see, uh, uh, we actually uh, formed sort of ad hoc uh, performing uh, sort of uh, the arts committee type of stuff. Tamil was on that. 
uh, uh, that, that started late uh, 75. Because uh, 76 already Tonarigumi uh, had uh, focused on the, on the ear. Because, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, 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 one person, uh, the messenger guy, uh, uh, he came to JCCA, and the JCCA had no response to it, as, as he says, Jim Horiguchi. So, but Tonarigumi had that project to go on, and that's what I'm taking, so we went ahead. So there were one year in, 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 the, in, the, in the period, by the time Gordon actually, I would say Gordon put them all together into one piece, okay? That's how this organization was actually formed and also had enough power and thrust to, to celebrate. But Tonarigumi without Gordon, we would have done all along. And that it's a lot more meaningless, I guess. So, so <laughs> no, I seriously think so. And so this is what I wanted to say. Just, just uh, 75 to 77. So a year and a half or so, uh, almost, uh, they are leading up to that. And he actually threw away his business and he came back to the community. I mean it, because I, I, I was with him in the performing group too. And so, uh, he, <laughs> mania, good, good mania, they show me. Yeah, uh, he, he had his office actually uh, 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 looking after by, he employed. <laughs> and he came back to the community full time. Uh, and and, and uh, also he had his office open too. Thank you, I'm sorry. I was talking. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I just uh, returned from Japan. My route to Japan was uh, beginning with the civil rights movement in the deep south, uh, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, then following the upheaval in the politics within this country, uh, Rochdale uh, communities of dispossessed, uh, the CYC, um, and then a trip to Japan. And uh, as a result of the trip to Japan, my, my Japanese, had, which was pretty non-existent, had improved considerably. And as usual, uh, I overreached and I wrote letters to my mother in simple uh, hiragana. And she wrote back, and it would take me hours to, to decipher this thing. And uh, finally I got one letter and it totally stumped me. And the person that I was with said, well, there's this place on Hastings Street called uh, uh, Language Aid and it's run by uh, these beautiful women. <laughs> and that's all I have to hear. So, so I walk into the storefront, and then there's this god-awful, gorgeous woman sitting on this dilapidated couch. And like, I'm, I'm hugged by them, so I, I go back and, and I run into Michiko Sakata, who yeah. is in, in the audience there. <laughs> And she was running uh, uh, the uh, language aid. And so she translated the, the letter and uh, served me tea, because uh, she's a very uh, generous, kind person. And I said, well, I learned to play the, I started Chakrachi, and I'm looking for a teacher. She said, oh, well, just down the street is this place called Tanarigami, and there's this guy named, named Takacha, who is, who is a master. And I said, okay. So I walked in and met Take, and Take is one of these guys that, you know, like there's a, there's a thousand watt smile. And, and, and it's like you're the only thing in, in his universe. So we got, we worked it out, and, and that, was, that was it. I mean, I, I became totally hooked into the community, which led to the project that, that uh, uh, Gordon mentioned, which is a historic photo exhibit. And then uh, I remember a few days later, I walked in there and there was this young girl came and sat on the couch and talked to me. And, uh, and, and that was it too. That was, that was my you know, we, we didn't think of it ever since. Incidentally, incidentally, <laughs> at that point, uh, all the people in our community were horrified. You know, because there was a slick photographer from the east taking this poor, innocent, <laughs> sunset girl from, from, from
from <laughs> Steve's Street, you know, he was this dirty old man responding to me. Whereas it was the reverse, believe me. <laughs> Uh, but but uh, uh, just to finish, so there's two key things. Tananigumi, you know, that was the place where, where everything uh, germinated. There was a fountainhead, okay? It was a place where we could come. And critically, it was the only time where all generations of Japanese Canadians got together. And what was important was that we Nisei Sansei, I'm, I'm, I'm Nisei, but mentally, psychologically, uh, I'm, I'm more sunset, but it was a, it was when we heard about the stories from from the East Bay that you know the Powell Grounds was where where the community came and celebrated. So when the centennial came up, somebody came up with the brilliant idea of well let's 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 get back to that and why not hold this festival on on the grounds? And it was it was and that captured the feeling. Uh, that we were all experiencing a rebirth. And, but it was also a political statement that um, despite uh, the attempts of the racist forces to drive us out of uh, BC, that we, we were still here, we were reaffirming our history, and we were recapturing lost ground. Um, and what brought us to that was the 60s, okay? was the civil rights movement, which, uh, you know, uh, got people to think about identity politics, about heritage, all these factors. And it wouldn't have happened without that impetus. Okay. Um, did you want to... So I just mentioned that, well, my use pretty much expressed, you know, what happened with a bunch of Asanse. So for myself, too, there was this wave of Asanse going back, coming, going to Japan to find our... Um, identity or history or connect with that part of us and then, then we all were coming back and I remember I came back in 76 and was driving down Hastings with my brother and looking for work because I just come back and it's like what am I going to do and suddenly I saw this awning that said Japanese what was it Japanese community volunteers was that what so anyways stop the car <laughs> <laughs> who are these people so I was walking in there and there's Take and of course he is Rick says, he just totally embraced us and said, wow, you know, like, and it's like we're sunset looking for our community. And it's like, well, here we are. So that was quite exciting. So, you know, people came dribbling in, all the sunset came in. Though I must say, Tamiyo, even though you're Nisei, there were mostly Issei and Sansei, but there were not many Nisei. Yeah. That, so they eventually got drawn in through redress. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah. But, so it was a very exciting We all got connected. Talked about a few people mentioned the inception of Powell Street itself and Powell Street Festival um, quickly because we have to be conscious of time very quickly surprisingly quickly I might interrupt you um, is there anything that you wanted to add about how the festival itself started and what were the factors that really um, created the festival I know Tanya talked about the centennial um, and obviously tonight for me and having a hangout space was a big role in that, but anything else that anybody wanted to add to the beginning of Powell Street? Well, I'd just like to add whatever's going on uh, that. Uh, I have to tell you, Tamiyo was the first Nisei, and there's no more, any more Nisei that they, for his age, if they're coming to the, you know, this uh, TG's uh, grassroots uh, ground. And uh, I, what I, I think about, actually, after hearing all you uh, uh, sunset people uh, saying that, is that, uh, yes, me had provided a base where uh, you know, Sansei aware of all this, uh, their history, and they wanted to do something, then they found Tonarikumi. Naomi was the first time, uh, first the Sansei came in, and she had friends like Mayu, uh, not only friends, <laughs> cousins, and then there are lots of Sansei actually followed. And so, so that, uh, to me, I, I saw sort of activism of Sansei which, which actually was actually supported and, uh, and guided by Tonari Kumi sort of. Uh, I, 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 I sort of think that's, that's a current type of stuff that, you know, people just jump in another way, but uh, it, it goes and it goes to what we have today, that what I'm glad is young people are running it. And I removed myself from the community 12 years ago that I'm glad that I did it because young people are doing it in their own way and 
that's inevitable. And uh, without that, it's going to die. Like Tonari Fumi, if I still run it, uh, it it's, it's gone, I know. Okay? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Anything else? Anybody wanted to add? Um, yeah, I just want to say a few words. One is, um, there, I do want to remember Jun Hamada, who, who was in Nisei also. So there were only a few Nisei, but they were critical players. Um, um, and, uh, the other person is uh, Ken Shikaze, who uh, passed away a, a few years ago. Um, very young and uh, tremendous energy and tremendous uh, 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 personal. Um, and uh, we, we all benefited from his work. Um, but, but also, I, I do want to, um, you know, recognize uh, the inspiration of Take, but also the, the uh, diplomacy of Gordon uh, Kedota, because um, he is the funniest diplomat I ever uh, saw. Um, I used to have a great time watching him operate. Um, and, and because in many ways, uh, because originally the Polish Festival was not necessarily a popular idea as it is now, that everybody kind of accepts it, and it's a tremendous, I mean, I'm just blown away by how big it's grown and how successful it has become. Um, but in those early days, there was a lot of differences of opinion as to whether it should even happen and who should sponsor it and things like that. And um, in, in a way, uh, I was the first coordinator, sort of just basically organizer, but, uh, but, um, uh, but of course, you know, as an outsider, I hit a kind of wall where, where nothing was working and nobody, I, I couldn't communicate with anybody. So I had to go to, to my godfather, Gordon uh, Fedota, and, and he actually negotiated the whole deal so that uh, a lot of different people, a lot of different organizations um, uh, got their opportunity to make some kind of compromise and get involved in the festival, um, and or at least not block it. And uh, so I think that that was that was tremendously important. And uh, there's no way it would have happened without Gordon. So thank you, Gordon. Um, I just want to add that. that uh, the, the new immigrants, people like Michko and, and, and Take, the enormous uh, contribution that they made to our community. Michko set up language aid, which led to Tanarigami. And, and although Jun was critical because it was his idea, but to really get Tanarigami together, it required a new immigrant. It required someone like Take not only for the language, but for his, his tremendous generosity, his spirit, which uh, connected with the Issei, all right? And that's, and, 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 and that's how everything grew from that point on. Um, and they were, they were the, the radicals, uh, the, the disenchanted, the disenfranchised, the spouting, I'm glad you got that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> After being so rudely interrupted, I'm going to quit. Carly, 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 start the festival. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Um, I can give a bit of it. Um, because um, Tararigumi was a relatively new organization in the Japanese uh, Canadian community. And as, as, as uh, Tamiya was saying, it was basically being run by in new immigrants, by uh, the Shinisi. And so they in themselves were kind of like to me, and I think to the Japanese community in general, um, kind of outsiders. So suddenly you had this outsiders group, and then and then they were providing services to the uh, elderly Issei who were basically isolated. and. And it was kind of a form of embarrassment to the Nisei that there was a, this whole group of Nisei older people who were not getting services. Um, so it's kind of like a loss of face, I thought, and things like that. And then uh, the third thing is that 
um, they were smart enough to go out and get some grants, like these uh, lo local initiative pro uh, project grants and NIP neighborhood improvement grants. So they were uh, they were uh, uh, they knew how to hustle and get grant government money. And of course, Japanese Canadians at the time. Um, the Nisei were like, uh, the government was like, don't ever take any money from the government. And don't ever you know, do anything. Um, and if you did take money from the government, you were probably sort of uh, 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 wasting it or, 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 you know, things like that. So it was just a certain kind of social attitude. And then because Tanadagabu was a new organization trying to sponsor uh, a new event that was supposedly going to represent the community, um, uh, there was a lot of organizations that felt like it wasn't their place to do that. And so, it's, in some ways, it's completely natural looking back, but at, at, on the other hand, um, you have to kind of realize that the, the community had reached, was a certain, had a certain kind of stasis, a certain kind of inertia, that it was what it was, and it was going to resist change. Um, and, but then the change came, and then it actually proved to be very beneficial to the whole community, and I think also uh, was part of the whole lead into the redress movement as well. So, so all kinds of great things came out of it, and uh, in, in, in some ways, uh, um, you know, you can blame those people for resisting, but at the same time, you can totally understand their position and, and uh, why that happened. Okay. Just, uh, just to add to, to that, that, that uh, you know, from our point of view was, yeah, we could hustle that, but, but we also looked at the JCCA and all those people as, well, those, those squares, <laughs> yeah. you know? so there was a kind of arrogance on our part, Absolutely. too, yeah. uh, which, uh, unfortunately, uh, you ran into, <laughs> totally. Uh, just one little anecdote, when, when Taka and June first, first entered the downtown east side and were looking uh, for, for a spot, um, there were the St. Francis uh, sisters, Franciscan sisters, who did a soup kitchen uh, at, at noon. So they said, okay, well, let's go up there and, cause, cause, you know, we, we've got to experience the local community. Well, they were spotted by, by, by the older, uh, you know, community. And word got around. <laughs> All those, those, those Sanayami people, the Mohaji, you know, like this is the shame they go into the soup kitchen. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. Just to add that you all have a difficulty, right? Rick and I were caught by God. And, and, that, and the problem that was the was, uh, uh, Buddhist temple. They are, they are really, really mad because we called it at the festival of Odori for yeah. the dance. Right. And they, they had actually a bon Odori for a long time, uh, which, you know, to which we are kind of insisted. So we had to go to talk to one of the guys that they uh, 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 running at the uh, uh, Buddhist temple. And, and uh, Rick and I went to uh, Gordon's border to go, okay, to go. <laughs> And then look at him, that this guy, look at him. Are you sensei? He says, yes. Oh, okay. You see, if I would have gone, I, I went, then I would have been yeah. go. Yeah. And, and I have to tell you one thing, JCC, during that time, never, really, never, never supported. And even on the, on the eve of uh, a festival, first, first year, uh, we constructed the booth uh, from oh, yeah. Lorenz last night, remember? Yeah. And, uh, and Mr. Well, so and so <laughs> and came to me, I was actually hammering on the top of the roof, and he says, start saying, you should do this, blah, 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 blah. these people, uh, uh, seniors, uh, they are not our people, they have not really worked, you know, uh, diligent enough, they don't, did not have chance to build family, and these guys are sort of not. So, so that's that view. So can I add? Yeah. I think the reason for the pleasure you can hear you. Um I think how even closer. closer. Even closer? Yeah. Yeah. This yes. is now even right closer. Right. Your name. Uh, my name is Yuko Shibata. I worked with uh, Central Project. But anyway, what I want to say is that 
Planning Committee started to help minority of Japanese Canadian seniors. Uh, and I think that's what the grassroots. And I was surprised to see over 100 seniors living around here in mine. And those sanseis were volunteering and also their communication going on. And what I think TG, what we appreciate now, or we are to cherish the idea or spirit of this tradition is due to those essays who shared their experiences and they came back because most of them didn't have uh, their children or younger generation could not come back. So that's what I think um, we should not forget. And how somehow the new generation of the community, I talk about Shinsei and Sansei and returning and who just find out, or not just find out, but realized that they are Japanese Canadian, not Japanese. And I think post-war myself was also, well, um, I was outsider, uh, but at the same time, I realized what is needed. And I felt it's for older generation living alone in, I mean, little housing. And which is not thinkable, but that's what their choice. Many of them, I realized, there was independence because they were able to speak the language, go to the familiar uh, landscape, lions, peaks, and also in the smell of sea. And that's what I think it's still is going on, and I cherish that spirit. And I remember being classified as we were. Uh, Red, I mean, we are radical, our group. <laughs> and I knew for being radical, and I, I'm a very middle road person. <laughs> I'm sure my parents will be horrified in Japan. But anyway, the, I think the spirit, I still believe that you say people who are really active participant for the first year in 77, I think their spirit lives still with us. Thank you so much. I think we have actually Michiko you would like to you for our comment. Hi, my name is Michiko Sakata. I used to be once we are gorgeous. <laughs> so many of them. I think it was product of the 1960 and the 70. Uh, you know, there was so much thing was happening and I came to Vancouver 1970 as an immigrant and from Japan to New York after working for United Nations. And so when I came to America, it was the first black man was entering in the uh, uh, university. And it was a huge uh, event, and uh, we heard in Japan that, but we couldn't understand. It was a time, Tommy was shooting a, a film in the civil rights in uh, South. <coughs> so when I came, of course I couldn't get the job, and I worked in a mining camp in the northern BC, and uh, it was uh, everybody said uh, everybody has to work in uh, natural resources in Canada, but. When I came back to Vancouver and I got together with a, uh, several very talented uh, European, uh, Canadian, and decided to apply for, uh, for the project under the LIP. And LIP, Lang uh, Local Initiative Project, was again under the Trudeau, I think it was the most, uh, uh, most brilliant idea of 
to start local initiative project that many, many movements in Vancouver was started by LIP. So we started language aid in Power Street, uh, Take and all this, uh, young uh, immigrants, but we didn't have any idea what went in Canada. So when Power Street was filled with a lot of older people still, surviving uh, uh, old generation of Issei who couldn't speak English. So we, in every day we are very busy helping these people who couldn't go to doctor or uh, some kind of, uh, you know, government uh, documents we're translating. And we make, uh, establish a very close bond with these older people. And through their, uh, this uh, friendship, we, I started seeing an incredible their photograph that, that they were showing me when they were in the camp. And, and I just couldn't understand what went on in Canada. So then I thought that, that, that we should tell the history, the story, to the Canadian, and most of the Canadian I asked whether they were aware of it, nobody seems to know. And also when I was going to River, uh, Riverview, and some of the surviving patients from Second World War uh, who, were in, uh, who were put in the mental institution because he, uh, he wasn't carrying a, his uh, identification card during the war, so he was put in a mental institution, never got out. So it was the most incredible, these stories and of these people start finding out, and then one day, Mr. Tamiyo Wakayama walked in to Language A, and he said, he, I think you just came back from Japan. And I found out that he was a photographer. So I told about this photography that I've been seeing a photo of this old man. And he said, I said, why don't we have photo exhibit and to show and tell the history of these people? And I remember, correct, if I'm correct, you said, I don't think it will happen again in Canada. Yeah. But so through his comment that I kind of started understanding a little bit what the second generation, first generation went through and their hesitance to tell the story. Don't rock the boat again. But soon uh, uh, the Tamiyo finally agreed to have a photo exhibit. Then Take was begging on the part uh, the uh, Gas town, right? You don't have any job. <laughs> you, don't any, uh, you don't have any job. So, anyway, so, um, and so soon, Takeo, Tamio, and all these people started gathering, and uh, before I knew that everybody had the most of this incredible energy and the history, like Tamiyo's background with the uh, civil rights movement. And, and uh, so they all got started connecting. And before I knew, like Power Street festivals, and I think everybody brought their experience, like I brought from New York, you know, uh, civil rights movement and also women's movement and uh, black movement that all that anger the energy and we all put together that most incredible this power street festival and all other organization was born and i was quite surprised and really you know that my little contribution to community that uh, I initiated, I didn't realize that. <laughs> but I think everybody brought most incredible and the Jones, you know, this uh, uh, bulletins and, and it just amazing uh, uh, energy got together. And uh, so that's what I'm really honored that I was 
so naively innocently he was able to <laughs> contribute to this movement. John, then right away I think of Fumiko. Yeah. Fumiko yeah. was just yeah. an amazing person who contributed so much we have no idea, especially to the redress movement, to Tanani Gumi, so just wanted to say that. Yeah. I think I think we're I think we're done. We're done. <laughs>